I expect Char to be fierce and Asura to be ruthless. But you, Silvari, surprise me. Favorably, I hope. Absolutely. I would never have imagined warriors so slender could be so steadfast. What is with that Silvari's accent? That is so, like, weird. All right, okay, never mind. I think they all sound like, I dare, dare I say it, English, but not really very English. I don't know. They, I think a lot of the Safari do sound like that, though. Uh, so the next section of the blog post is uh, Strength Above All, is what it's called. Why the Norn working with others? Because they've learned the hard way that some foes are too strong to fight alone, and sometimes there's no time to become stronger before a battle. The Norn are proud, but they're not stupid. They don't follow leaders, but they will follow heroes, and even a hero needs help sometimes. So I think we learned that firsthand in Eye of the North, really. But don't forget, I mean, a lot of this is for players who haven't played the first game, so these are kind of blog posts where they can read and sort of teach them about these things without having seen or, or heard about the first game and what, what really the, the Norn were about there. Askir, one of the greatest Norn heroes in history, knocked out one of Jormag's teeth, but even he wasn't strong enough to defeat the dragon. I, see, how did he knock out the teeth? It's nuts. Like, you see this thing, and it's like 20 times the height of the, the Norn standing next to it, and bear in mind, the Norn are freaking huge. You look, uh, This is like a common theme with Norn architecture, you will see as well, that everything they build is huge huge and don't forget there will I'll definitely be putting these screenshots through actually I'd completely forgotten about that myself but yeah we will continue putting screenshots in on the dungeon videos but ah oh, just it's it's so it feels a bit hollow Holbrack I must say and I'm not that blown away by it not as not as blown away by it as I am like Lion's Arch or Divinity's Reach those those two places man they're just incredible but still I mean it is very 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 um very cool how big the stuff is there I remember the first screenshot they ever showed like it looked like actual fully sized Norn because of the perspective it looked like there were little toys on the floor in a regular sized room like absolutely minuscule little ants on the floor and then arena net were like no 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 those, those are fully sized not and this is just a really big room and it was just everyone just freaked out because they were loving it so much but um so Norn become as strong as they can and they surround themselves with others who are just as strong or stronger the strong deserve respect and the weak are useless so we got another little sound bite here <laughs> what sport i could do this all day Sport? They're mindless minions. Swarms of walking corpses. Where's the sport in that? I can chop down more trees than you, and I can hack down more dead things than you. I don't think I'll ever get used to Norn in an army. I am an army. I am a hero. All of you are my entourage. <laughs> I love it. Wow, I am an army. Brilliant. So uh, the next section is called Power for a Price. Strength for strength's sake can come at a high cost, though. There are some Norn who have turned to Jormag for power, abandoning the spirits of the wild. They believe Jormag is the ultimate predator, the strongest force, and thus he should be worshipped instead. This has always been curious to me because I've wondered why there are... Th these are the Sons of Svanir, as we're going to find out. I've, I wonder why the Sons of Svanir only worship Jormag and not the other dragons, Elder Dragons. Is it because the other Elder Dragons haven't directly affected the Norn yet? And that's why they consider him to be the ultimate predator? What I thought would be interesting, and I've talked about this a little bit before God, I keep saying that. I've talked about this before I've talked about the, um, the, how the Elder Dragons aren't necessarily allied with one another and how they might actually fight each other under the right circumstances. I wonder how how the Norn would react if that kind of situation happened. If there was a huge fight between uh, Jaw Mag and potentially one of the Elder Dragons because I, I don't think it's beyond Arena Net's capabilities to have something like that happen, right? Because essentially, um, we're going to have we, they, they've established that there are five dragons and if they were to do one game for every dragon, A, the for formula would get quite boring quite quickly and I've heard people say that a lot and yes, I think that would get quite boring as well. And B that's going to be a hell of a long time before we've actually dealt with the Elder Dragon threat so I do I do really think it's possible that maybe like the second expansion that they release will just sort of take out two Elder Dragons at once by having them fight one another and if they choose Jormag to be one of those, they could take it in some really interesting directions with uh, with Svanir himself, you know, could be really really cool. 
So these Norn that worship Jormag instead, that these Norn recall the legend of Svanir, the corrupted Norn bear and the gift he received from the dragon. So this is uh, Jorah's brother, if you remember this. I mean, this is really integral to the stuff we saw in, in Eye of the North. It's super cool. Uh, they call themselves the Sons of Svanir in his honor, and they seek to gain the abilities that he once had. The enhancements they receive make them more aggressive and more dangerous, but being a member of the Sons of Svanir doesn't automatically mean that someone is evil. Most Norn are tolerant of other viewpoints, so a Son of Svanir is accepted until he proves to be a threat. This I love. I love this about the Norn. Okay, they 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 give these group. They, they they definitely have labels for groups of Norn, right? So they've got the sons of Svanir. But the Norn are awesome because they don't just like automatically judge the whole group and be like, oh, you guys are all assholes. We definitely like you. Don't like you at all. Go away. They're not like that. It's, it's on a much more individual level. Norn are far more independent. That's just very core to who they are. So they don't judge entire groups of people like the sons of Svanir, and they all get a chance. To to just act like normal civilized people in society. It's like the Norn don't necessarily agree with what the Sons of Svanir believe in, but as long as they're not causing trouble in their neighborhood, they don't care. Which, at the end of the day, I, in my opinion, is kind of the mentality I think we should all strive to have. But it's very, very cool. I remember when the, when this came out, people were asking on the forums, they were a little bit confused about what the, what the view exactly here was. Like, are the Sons of Svanir evil? This is quite good because it's more shades of grey, but uh, I remember ArenaNet coming back with, I can't remember specifically who it was, but they came back with basically an analogy. And it was, um, and I don't remember the specific name anymore, but they mentioned that there's like some like motorcyclist festival, some big festival that happens like every year, or like where loads of motorcycle gangs like congregate and just hang out. And generally, it's a really nice um, festival that, that, that isn't too bad at all. But there are like certain gangs or something that come along and, and are well known for ruining everything and just being basically very rowdy. And, and, and they likened the Norn, how the Norn view the Sons of Svanir to how the motorcyclists view the these other like more rowdy gangs essentially how they'll let them in and they'll say hey look you can have fun basically but until sort of shit hits the fan essentially that's when they'll actually do something about it but for all intents and purposes all the gangs are welcome and it's just a really really cool mentality I remember them, them referencing that it's a shame that I don't remember many details about the story anymore but but yeah so we've got another sound bite here uh, this one's called not causing trouble great a son of Svanir shouldn't he be out corrupting some wildlife Maybe. But his coin is as good as yours. He pays, he stays. Give me an ale, Horston. Hey, he says. So yeah, basically those 16 seconds said it better than I could have. That's their mentality. And it's really cool. I really, really do like it. Uh, so the next section is uh, wild and natural. The path to true power is one of independence, not barter as the sons of Svanir seem to believe. The spirits of the wild have always been around to guide the Norn, and while the spirits rarely offered aid directly, they always aim to help. So you see, it's very indirect, very, very weird. I guess that one of the only occasions where that we've ever heard of where they do offer aid directly is where they guided the Norn south. I mean, they, they deliberately, these spirits, they deliberately came out and, and protected this race and stopped the race from killing itself. It's weird. Why would, why would the spirits have favor over the Norn like that? Why would they... I mean, maybe it kind of goes into what we were talking about the Kodan before. Maybe it somehow links into that with, like, trying to keep the balance and stuff. Maybe these spirits are kind of the same as the spirits that the Kodan worship. Or, you know, there could be overlaps here. It's it's, it's cool. Like, it's, it's vague, but you can kind of see the threads are there somehow. It just It's just all about how they weave together. If nothing comes of asking for help, say the Norn, then, they, then clearly their help wasn't necessary. No one can become stronger by relying on others. It's adversity and besting challenges that hones the hunter. Uh, we've got another sound bite. Um, the Snow Leopard, this one's called. You must explain to me how you're such a commanding and dominating fighter. Snow Leopard. She gives me the poise and balance I need when I'm standing on a hill of bodies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love how much how the, just sort of the Norn can turn every little thing into a joke. It's absolutely brilliant. So now we've got a screenshot of um, just this really really cool looking uh, Norn that's basically been turned into one of the Frostborn, um, which is something that happens with Jaw Mag. Again, if you've read it, I, it's amazing actually. Edge of Destiny has so many things in it that are actually relevant to these posts and stuff. Ghost of Ascalon, by by comparison, despite being a better book, doesn't really have so much to go on. See, that's just such a shame because. Uh, I kind of wish they'd swap the authors for the story because one of the authors got a far superior story to work with but just did much worse writing on it. But yeah, okay, so uh, the next section is what legends are made of. 
Strength alone isn't enough though. The strongest person, no matter their race, will be forgotten in time if they don't do great things. A lasting legend requires exalted deeds, tremendous fortitude and unmitigated heroism. But even that isn't enough if nobody hears about it. Norn tend to be very vocal about their deeds, giving importance and gravity to even the most routine acts. See, they sound very Asura here, sort of just quite big-headed, but the, the motivations behind why they're being big-headed big -headed are very different between the Asura and the Norn. The Asura are just out to undermine people people and they're simply trying to put themselves on pedestals in comparison to those around them and, and just come out superior to their friends. While with the Norn, it's more about them just literally wanting to have a place in the universe essentially to be remembered which is you know a lot more noble and a not cooler. Um, Few people can know for sure what they'll be remembered for once they're gone, but the important thing is that they're remembered for something. So long as someone keeps telling the legend, they're immortal. It's a really nice view of it actually. Um, very, very cool. So, uh, we got another one little here, making a mark. I'm taking Asgir's lead. I'd rather reach for my dream and die than live and fade away. You think he reached his dream? Oh, yes. He showed us we could fight the dragon. If I can make my mark like that, I'll die with a smile. So it's, it's just, it's a really cool mentality. It, it really is. I mean, essentially, I suppose, I mean, people always make the argument, right, that obviously when you look at games or anything, really, that have got lots of different races, all that we can really do as humans is have these races portray a different aspect of humanity, but, but to a greater degree, because we've got no basis for comparison. We don't, we've never seen another intelligent race that views things differently that we can base a fantasy race, race off of. It's just, it's completely alien to our minds, so we can't do anything else. So it, it makes sense, but like the Norn mentality here, this is, I suppose, really, isn't that what we people in the real world, isn't that really what we all want, essentially? I mean, I know that's really, when it boils down to it, what I would want as well. Okay, the importance of legacy. This is the last section here. Uh, the Norn may seem obsessed with their strength and status in the present, but it really boils down to caring about the legacy they leave behind. Remembering those who came before you and trying to live up to them. Self-improvement and self-worth. Surpassing what is remembered to become remembered. They want to be respected and they want their legacy to be respectable. They boast and brawl and live their lives as though it will all be remembered and recorded. Because they hope that it will. They want to become a bigger legend to inspire those who follow. Likewise, we've taken the legacy of the Norn from Guild Wars and tried to stay true to the elements that made them memorable. As we forge new legends, we hope to leave as grand a legacy with Guild Wars 2 as we did with Guild Wars, and I personally look forward to seeing how your legends play out. Maybe I'll see you at a moot sometime. Alright, so there you go. Obviously, that was a, a little message from um, from David Wilson there again, right at, right at the end. It's a, that's a cool blog post. I, I do really like these little story ones. There, there are definitely a little... Um, Little audio ones, there are definitely a lot of these with the little audio bites in them. It really helps to sort of break it up. But I guess the only difference really is there are two different types of blog. One, and they've, they're all lore blogs, but some break it up having little stories in between and some break it up by having sound in between. Most uh, race weeks came with a blog post like this, so there will definitely be a lot of these that we can listen to. Um, but yeah, okay, so... I'm going to take a little break for a minute, but then we'll be back with... I'm not I'm not 100% sure. We'll probably look at uh, Norn Week, Go Big or Go Home. This will be the one about Holbrack and how everything is freaking huge there. It's amazing. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a bit of water and stuff because I've been recording for about half an hour already. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in a second. <laughs> um, yeah, it wasn't quite a second, actually. Um, hello, guys. I hope you're having a good day. Right now, it's Sunday morning for me. It's been quite a few days. I mean, I've even been ahead and filmed the next dungeon, Frostmoor, before finishing this recording. I feel so bad. I, I shouldn't have put off Dark Crime for so long. But uh, basically what I've done, and you will have noticed this already, um, I have sped up the, the, the video very slightly. I don't think it's been it's that bad at all. You can barely tell it's been sped up. Maybe that's only because I obviously haven't seen the finished product yet, though. But... Essentially, I've sped it up slightly. I've cut down what was an hour-long thing, which I was going to split into three videos. I've just uh, I've sped it I've sped it up so that it gets to about 50 minutes long, and in in that way, I can just put out two 25-minute things. But that does put us right at the end of the run right now. So I'm just, this is post commentary, but I'll be talking about the actual dungeon here. So uh, I can't quite. Oh my god, it was like a week ago. I feel so bad. Um, 
I, I can't quite tell how the race is going, whether we're both sort of racing right in the last floor at the moment. I'm pretty sure this is the last floor. Um, it's a cool dungeon, though. I mean, the next dungeon, obviously, will be um, the what the dungeon with the, the vent run. So, basically, um, there'll probably be a lot less for you guys to actually watch in, as far as um, uh, talking on the actual text boxes goes in, on the um, on screen. Because I feel a bit bad about that, actually, because not everybody came into vent. We had two people on the run who weren't in vent, and, and basically there was very little sort of chat going on in game, obviously, and, and I feel like I kind of left you guys out. So, to both of you guys, Boa and um, Sunspear, Gilo, if that's how you pronounce your name, I'm sorry to you guys, but, uh, but yeah, it was a good run. Why am I talking about that run? So, with this run, uh, you will have seen, obviously, one of the guys in the guild... Um, I've been talking to to see how exactly his team's run's going. We raced again on Saturday, so uh, do look forward to that. In fact, I think someone was going to film the race um, that we did yesterday, for me, yesterday, Saturday, um, in Frostmoors, but I don't think uh, in the end he was like, oh no, I don't want to put the video up anyway, So because the, the team was struggling a bit. To be, to be fair, everybody struggles with that. Alright, so we actually get some dialogue here. I may as well read this out. Hold on. So say, your mother was a coward. She even ran away from the shadow of her own bare form. So you will have been able to read this in the um, the description for the videos, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's nice to actually be able to read. So, see, I, I, I've played all of the dungeons. I've done them all at least twice on my main because you have to do that to sort of get the Eye of the North title. But I, I didn't really remember that there were so many dungeons that had a lot of dialogue going on in them. But, pff, you know, well, I, I stand corrected. But whenever there will be significant dialogue in them, I'll be sure to have those in the descriptions. The other thing I feel uh, still a little bit weird about with this series is the old... Um the, the collectors. Some collectors have got some really cool stuff to say. And in fact, in Frostmoors, you find like all these tomes and stuff scattered around on the floor that have got interesting little bits of, of lore that will also have to be in the descriptions unless you guys want to pause. I did try and click as many as possible, but I'm pretty sure I missed a few. Anyway, right, so this is the last room with all the Jotun in it, as you can see here. Right in the middle, there's that huge Jotun. Don't forget, the Jotun themselves are pretty freaking massive anyway. I mean, Matt is a pretty big character, especially in Balthazar form, as you can see there, and we barely even reach their waists. So they are huge. I've talked about before how I love the idea of the Norn obviously fighting against the Jotun. And then look at this guy, he's twice the height of the other Jotun. He is twice the height of the other. I mean, it is ridiculous. He just does so much damage. It's brilliant. I mean, uh, I, I wish they kind of expanded more on why there is such a huge Jotun here. Maybe he's just sort of a Jotun with gigantism or, or something like that. Or, you know, I like to think that maybe he's like the big daddy Jotun, you know. Like, kind of like how you have a queen bee, maybe. I mean, the, it's not like the Jotun are insects. But it would be nice if there was a little bit more lore written about him. What's his name? Havoc Soul Ward? But anyway, there you go. He's down. Uh, Colgrim says, hmm, you lived. I, might, I may need to take back some of the things I said about you. Yes, god damn you have to take these things back. So once again, we p puny humans prove to the Norn that we're actually badasses. Constantly having to do it. The Norn being individuals though, of course, it doesn't really go that far because uh, you can prove something to one Norn and the rest still won't give a crap because they don't judge people um, by the, the group that they are affiliated with but on an individual level, which I suppose does have its uh, upsides and its downsides. But yeah, you'll see in the room itself I thought was quite interesting. There's loads of these like little anvils going on around here. Um, I don't, re I know that they're somewhere else in the game, but I don't recognise specifically where from. They are a reused asset, but I can't remember where from. There are some people actually talking, and I do it. Look at that pain invert, that was brilliant. There are, there are some people talking um, as we were going through this dungeon about how um, this, this this dungeon really, there's not some amazing, unique, or really nice looking areas in the dungeon but you can say about this one it's probably one of the dungeons with the most unique areas in it i mean you don't see a lot of the areas we saw here reused too often but then again it is just very typical kind and i think it's because um you know in the jade sea there were all the quarries and things and kind of that specific kind of models snaking their ways up the walls and stuff being used for those i'm pretty sure they reused those for this except that this time they've just been retextured to look like ice instead which is really cool that they did that i'm sure that they did it um, but as a result, this actually ended up looking like a bit more of a, a unique dungeon than the others. And yes, this is me running around trying to kill all of the Jotun when nobody else really cared about doing it. Everybody wanted, just wanted their chest. I've already got the chest. I think I tried to click it. But, but yeah, as, as somebody just said in chat, we're um, going to open the chest and then go back outside to get the reward dialogue. for the. Uh, yeah, I must have got the chest because the countdown's now started. Yeah, we're going to go back outside and read the reward dialogue um, for the dungeon. It's a cool dungeon. It, like I said, I don't, I don't, this isn't really a dungeon that stands out to me. It's not that much stand out about it. But it's a cool dungeon, and at the end of the day, I, I thank that ArenaNet decided, hey, we're going to add the dungeon in anyway, despite the fact... And this is my, my view with, with regard to all the dungeons. I like that despite the fact they clearly didn't have time to set up 
re truly unique dungeons for every single one. I like that they still decided, no, we're not going to take this content away from the players. We're going to add it to the game in however rudimentary a form as it would have to have ended up anyway, which I think is quite commendable. A lot of people bitch at developers for like half arsing something, but I, te I, I, I still like to view it and say, oh, hey, yeah, but at least we got something. They at least tried because at the end of the day, you know, the developers probably want to see this stuff go into the game just as much as anyone else does. Now, there's always that story about Halo 2. Um, how am I? How have I got onto this topic? There's always that story about Halo 2. How um, they like they had this whole story for the the, the single player experience of Halo 2, and um, they they never had time to finish it all off, so they kind of had to cut it halfway through. And you can listen to the developers talk about that, and they just sound so heartbroken. So you know, when it's not that developers hate the players and they're just too lazy to put the stuff out. I think most of the time, a lot of developers, particularly with regards to Arena Net, um, can be quite passionate about what they're making. God, I sound like such a fanboy saying that. But yeah, okay, so uh, I'm going to cut it forward because obviously we don't want to just stand here uh, for 1 minute 30 seconds until we've got to the reward dialogue. So let me just skip forward here a bit. This is the advantage of commentating with um, editing. So here we go. I've just skipped forward to uh, coming out at Biora Marches. So you'll see here as we walk up these stairs in a second... Um, the, the, the original dialogue starts playing again that we originally had and that's because there's no way for the game to know who's completed the dungeon or not So it just goes over again, which is quite ironic really. It happens with frost mods as well So uh, in theory you could then How just be I in an infinite loop and help them again But here he says back already ha, by the spirit of the bear I'm not surprised even young Norn have returned screaming from their first encounter with a Jotun What's that? You've, you've slain the beast? Remarkable! I never would have believed it possible. Your stature belies your prowess, hero. You possess the strength of a Norn to be sure. Truth be told, Colgrim and I wagered on how long it would take you to, before you ran out of the cave with your tails between your legs, begging for our help. Seems we both lost. It looks like the winnings belong to you. See? Ah, oh, man, I love how I read that in time with my past self. Yeah, so that was a really, really cool dungeon. I see, like I said at the start, they don't really acknowledge the fact that they came into the dungeon with you with the reward dialogue. Not sure what's going on there, but... um. Pretty cool anyway, so everybody's going to get up behind me and wave. This is quite cool. I can actually commentate while I was sort of telling everyone and doing a countdown. So thank you very much to all of you who came. Um, and once again, I would just remind anyone, you can come every Saturday, every Sunday, except maybe when Winter's Day comes out. I will. You can come to Doom Law Shrine, American District um, 1, and we will be there at 6 o'clock GMT. Just figure out what time zone you're in and when that will be. And you can come in the Dungeon Run. I always favour people who haven't been before, so... Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope to see you in-game uh, next time. I'll see you next time, everybody.